lips up real talk Real man I got me tell them straight up from the heart So all the youths are from the heart Rob here, I just want to do a video um, about hell I kind of want to step back from the traditional teachings and focus on like a bird's eye view of every scripture that mentions hell in the New Testament and the Old Testament. There are very few scriptures in the Old Testament that mention hell. There are many scriptures in the New Testament that do. Um, Jesus talked about it very, um, I mean, you got to go by what he says primarily as he is a part of the maker himself and the maker dwelled in him bodily in the fullness, the maker's fullness, the maker dwelled in him bodily. So <clears throat> he would know above all, in fact, what's interesting is I don't remember any part where the apostles talk about hell as far as describing what it is as much as Jesus did. Jesus described it. Um, there are some people that believe in the salvation of all mankind that I know of on the internet and they believe that when Jesus mentioned that there was a man it was a rich man and there was another man named Lazarus well, sorry Lazarus who was lying suffering with sores and couldn't get up in front of his gate and the dogs would lick his sores and the rich man did nothing to help him now Jesus at the beginning of that he said there was a rich man there was so it's a true thing it really happened some of those people, though, they want to say that it was a parable. But since Jesus said there was a man, uh, you can't say that's a parable. Okay, He wouldn't have said that, that there was a man. And I think they're afraid of the scripture debunking the fact that there is a, I'm sorry, debunking their um, their belief that there is no hell okay because there is a hell that's for sure so the point is is what did that guy do to go to hell um, I think this I got I'm driving so I think the scripture that I'm referring to is in Luke I want to say chapter 15 um, I'll if I forget to post it in the description box and in the comments, uh, leave a comment, say, hey, post it, you know. Uh, and the point is, is, what I want to get at is, what sent the rich man to hell? Okay. Um, so, the rich man, as far as Jesus was re referring to the people there, you know, he was addressing the Old Testament Israel chosen people, nation of Israel, Old Testament, okay? So, I would assume, and it's, a, it's safe to say, that the rich man and the beggar were both in the nation of Israel, okay? God's chosen people, okay? So, that's interesting aspects to bear in mind there. He didn't specifically say that, that in that passage but you see that the beggar who died in in um, he was in trouble and he suffered and died and the, the, the guy who could have helped him didn't he went to Abraham's bosom now Abraham's bosom is um, it seems to be on the, in the same location as hell but there's there's a separation between hell and Abraham's bosom by that deep chasm. Or it, say, it says in the King James, a great gulf fixed. Um, the gulf is a chasm. It seems like a bottomless pit, actually. I'm guessing that that's probably the bottomless pit. 
not exactly sure, but it seems to match up with that. The main thing I want to focus on though is the how did you know this this rich man how did he end up in hell? The the reason he said Abraham told him across the chasm said in in, in the life in your life you you had um, I'm, I got a pair of races I'm driving. You basically had all the comforts and and satisfaction in this life, you know, before you died. And you let someone else suffer right in front of you and didn't share. And like Jesus says, if you see someone naked and you have two coats, give them one, you know. Obviously, this guy had a lot of riches, so he could have helped the guy. And he ended up in hell, and that seems to be the main thing that put him in hell. That's very interesting. I mean, a lot of people teach that if you don't believe in Jesus, you go to hell forever when you die. Now, consider this. The kingdom of God, does that mean you're going to heaven after you die? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I always ask my children when I read them scripture, I say, okay, where's your hand? And they say, right here, and they show their hands. So the kingdom of heaven is with us. Jesus, he also said in another part of scripture that quoted him, that he said that the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, that's not after you die. So the kingdom of God, and you gotta, you got to relate to this too. It says in, I think it was Galatians. Yeah. Where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Right before the fruit of the Spirit, it lists a bunch of evil, I think it's evil fruit. It doesn't call it evil fruit, but... And the evil fruit is mentioned, I'll call it the evil fruit. And he says that he, those that do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, inherit the kingdom of God? You must have the Holy Spirit here in this life to inherit the kingdom of God in this life before you die. Jesus said in the book, end of the book of Mark, he who believes on me, these shall, um, the works, these works shall follow. I think it's works, he said. It's in the very end of chapter, I think 13, no, not 13, 16 in Mark. And he says, they will cast out devils, speak in new languages. They shall, it says, um, I think, pick up ser serpents. But in the Greek, it means upset serpents. Like if you see people, people that uh, rebuke sinners, it upsets the serpents that are in them, the devils. They get all upset. You know what I mean? That's the way I understand that. Um, I think I'm probably missing one of them. Healings is in there, that's for sure. Um, the point is, that's the kingdom of heaven at hand. Our inheritance is the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And there's many gifts, okay? That's our inheritance before we die, okay? We inherit that from the Father and Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So, I really beg to differ with people who want to throw all that to after you die. And like Jesus said, it's at hand. Where's your hand? You gonna get your hand after you're dead? Or do you have your hand now? Is your hand with you or somewhere else? Unless you cut it off and cast it from you. <laughs> Probably, you know, that doesn't make sense. So, you see how that works and that, what I'm coming around to now is salvation, being saved. Okay, being saved, saved from what? Okay, I know that, that if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved, okay? If you, that's generally what is true, okay? Now, being saved, I know that when I believed in, trusted in Jesus, and I called upon him, to clean the evil spirits out of me, okay, I was saved from particular sins. 
there was particular certain sins that I overcame and don't have in me anymore because Jesus saved me from those sins. Okay, not all my sins. Otherwise, you can take the book of 1 John out of the Bible. He who says he has no sin is a liar, right? Or it says, um, he who says he has no sin, um, I don't know if it says he's a liar and the word is not in him. I know it says the word is not in him. I'm, I'm at least paraphrasing, so check it out for yourself. Um, I know committing sin can cause you to, um, like committing, like intentionally going out and sinning can cause you to lose your salvation, not in the sense that you would go to hell forever when you die, but that you would lose you know, God saving you from a certain sin, well, you'd go back to that sin and it would get on you. Jesus said that, and there would be more, more devils worse than the first. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but he says, you know, when he casts out, I think it's casting out a devil or a sin. And then, um, I think if you, if you go back to it, I'm paraphrasing totally, then there'll be, if you go back to that sin, there'll be more sins coming there, you know, it like multiplies from what you had before. And Jesus warned that one guy too. He says, he healed him, I think it was. And he said, okay, go and um, don't sin again, lest, lest something worse come upon you. And again, I'm paraphrasing. But you know what I mean. If you know the scriptures, that'll ring your bell. The point is, we need to focus on the here and now more than after we're dead. Obviously, we can't affect that, right? And you cannot do away with the scripture that says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that any man, every man, um, any man's works that shall be burned, he, hell, he shall suffer loss, but yet he himself shall be saved, yes, so is through fire. So we know it's the works that are burned up, not the people. And he's addressing any man, every man, not just the church, like in the in the that part of that chapter before that that passage, he's addressing the church and himself specifically. And after that passage, he's going back to addressing the church and himself specifically. So you need to keep that in the context too. And First Timothy four ten, all men. Let's see. Uh, make sure God is the savior of all, God who is the savior of all. I'm trying to remember the verse, sorry. Um, anyway, 1 Timothy 4.10, look it up for yourself. And then there's another one that says, Jesus said, he said, I, if I am lifted up, will draw all men unto, me, unto myself. And it says, the word draw is drag, the original text. It's like a, a net that you catch fish in. And fish don't want to be caught. They're not going into the net. They're trying to get out. So he's going to drag, and that's the word they use for that, like for catching fish I, I, from what I studied. So the point is um, we need to be careful on using all the scripture for our interpretations. And um, as far as back to the point here with hell, what does it take to go to hell? Jesus explained it. If you don't assist those in need who are around you, you're going to end up in hell. Otherwise, Jesus is not telling the truth. I mean, just straight up, okay? And that, that kind of made me think one time recently that, you know how there's a lot of people that are just afflicted their whole life and they just suffer and then they die? So, if the guy that suffered in front of the gate went to be with Abraham in Abraham's bosom automatically, which... I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he went. it says he went to hell and set the captives free. I believe that those who in Abraham's bosom were after, after, I'm sorry, after Jesus had risen from the dead, okay? <clears throat> now, because he's the first born from among the dead, right? Then all those... Um, so after he re ascended, and then he ascended, you know, after a few, after so many days, then he ascended to on the right hand of the Father. Now he's there. 
then when he went up, I believe all those other people that were in Abraham's bosom also went up also, you know, to be with him. Because he says, Apostle Paul said, absent from the body is present with the controller. So Abraham's bosom was freed up at that point and they went up. And it does say that many of the saints came out of the their graves and were seen by many. Okay, we, after Jesus rose. So I think during those days before Jesus went up to heaven, he wasn't the only one showing himself. That's what the scripture says. So in Matthew, I think it is. I can't remember the verse. I have a video on it, though, if you look back on my videos. Um, I think the graves, I can't remember the title. I'll post a link, though, in the description. If I don't, remind me. Um, and so you got to keep it all in perspective for for all the scripture to not be. you got to. You can't ignore a part, you know what I mean? Because it'll throw off your understanding of the truth. All of it has to be accepted and work together. And I challenge you that are putting off going deeper on this. Put this first because the true scope of salvation, it reveals the true love that God has for every man and woman. It also shows you that we as men and women and children are the we are the sought after element that God wants and loves to be with him it's the sin that's in us that will be destroyed at the last day just like Paul described in, in um, kind of complicated words in the translation he says that it's not me that caused me to sin but the sin that dwells in me he does explain though that it's the sin he doesn't know of and can't control. Okay. Now the sin he knows of and can, can and can that he knows of and he can control. I don't think he's referring to that, and that's why John explains in First John that it, if you do, and in Hebrews, um, I can't remember the part, but if you willfully sin after you've been delivered from that sin, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. I'm sure you can remember that uh, verse after I said that. And um, now the sacrifice for sin, there is a sacrifice. Jesus is a sacrifice for sin. But for those particular sins, the sacrifice for that for you would be made void because you'd have gone back to that sin. So that means the punishment would be due unto you if you go back to it. Like when you repent and God removes the sin from you, he's not going to punish you for it anymore. It's forgotten. But if you go back to it, then you are due the punishment for it. It will happen. Kind of like the unforgivable sin, which I did a video. I shouldn't say recently. It's been a long time since I did a video. But I think that's the last video I did. Check that out. It goes specifically on what the scripture says in the original text too about the unforgivable sin, as they call it. It goes right along with this. Um, so, if we can keep our minds on what Jesus was saying, I'll touch on too, if I have time, if the video cuts off, I'm probably not gonna do a part two, it'll just cut off. But um, this, this is just stuff I wanna touch on real quick, which you can look up for yourself. Other parts about hell, okay? So, hell, Remember Jesus talked about where the worm never dies and and uh, that there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's going to separate, separate the sheep from the goats. And I've done another video showing that the sheep and goats are actually the works, not the men and women, because you have to relate it to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that it's the works that will be burned away. Now, as far as the people going to hell that oppress people, it's the last day I'm referring to. So we're not referring to when people die and go to hell. Yes, they'll go to hell. But on the last day, it says, Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire without the people in them. Or the, I shouldn't say, yeah, uh, the men and women in them. Sorry, I'm trying to be specific on them. those who go in there. Um, and that's the second death. The point is, is it's the works that are thrown in there, not the men and women.